Hello, welcome to Wiggle Miniatures. I'm Jim, and tonight we're going to be painting a Knight Templar from Reaper Miniatures Legends Dark Heaven line. We'll be using primarily Vallejo uh, primers and Army Painter products, and we're going to be focusing on non metallic metals. Let's get started. This miniature was primed with an airbrush and Vallejo primers, first with black, then with gray and a white zenithal spray. This marks my third attempt at non-metallic metal and the result is far superior to my previous attempts. The cleaner molding made a huge difference, but in all fairness, I purposely spent more time on the non-metallic metal and ultimately, it was a combination of both more time allocated and a better quality miniature that made for such a drastic improvement. I mix a lighter grayish blue with the previous mixture, but I'm sure to keep plenty of my base coat for later steps. With the new mix thin to a glaze, I add the first highlights over multiple applications, dragging the glaze to the center where I want the highlights. I still have a few WizKids miniatures and some Reaper miniatures that are of poorer quality that still need to be painted, but once those are finished, my purchase of those will become few and far between. I'll still paint Reaper, but I'll be more selective and shy away from the white plastic models especially. I mix a darker blue and thin it to a glaze, adding it to the darker sections in the same manner as I applied the highlights, and then go back and forth between highlights and shades, focusing in the centers, but letting it drag over the edges to help smooth the transitions between light and dark. I add a glaze of arid earth, light paint with a tingy yellow as a brighter highlight following the same steps as before, but only covering about 50% of the highlight areas. I then add glazes of matte white, focusing on roughly 25-30% to of the highlighted areas. I also add reflections across the front of the shield and the blade, as well as adding edge highlights. With unthinned matte white, I add hatching and cross-hatching lines across the clothing. Mixing Mr. Weathering solvent and multi-black, I apply it with a cheap synthetic brush as a pin wash everywhere except the white clothing. On the chainmail, I only apply it where the darkest shadows would be. I finished the belt, clasp, shield, hilt, and helmet banding off camera, but the steps and colors are shown in a spreadsheet at the end of this video. I removed those steps from the video to keep the total runtime down, and I primarily wanted to focus on my non-metallic metal journey. I apply gloss varnish over the shield, helmet, hilt blade, and the cloak clasp before finishing the base and calling it a night. This is the final result. Considering how far I've come with non-metallic metal from my previous two attempts, I'm happy with the results. I need to smooth the transitions more, but I feel a lot more comfortable with the general approach this time around. Here's a side-by-side -side with my previous attempts. The less said about the miniature on the left, the better. Far too much yellow, and that sword. The sword blade on the middle miniature was far too blue, and the edge highlighting was sloppy, though in part due to the poor molding. This latest attempt, leaps and bounds better. It's gonna wrap it up for today. I hope you learned something or maybe you were inspired to try your own hand at um, metallic metals. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And if you like the content of this video and would like to see more, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm Jim with Working With Miniatures. I'm truly grateful for your time and I bid you a fond farewell. Until the next video.